Hello there and welcome back to another episode of our Lumina Neo Academy. The show where we help you to get the most out of this photo editing application. Now, if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder here at Clever Photographer. Now, before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, I'm going to give you access to our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So you make sure that you stay until the end. Also, if you don't own Luminar Neo or the HDR Merge plugin, get our discount code to get the best possible price and you can find it in the description of this video. Finally, I would like to ask you to please like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. When digital revolution arrived to photography, it brought many advantages for photographers. To name a few, we are now able to take large amount of images with no increases in cost. We can see them immediately after we take them and we can easily change ISO with each shot. One of the most important benefits of digital photography is one that can be a little intimidating for new photographers, the histogram. But there is no reason to shy away from it. It's pretty easy to use once you understand how it works. The histogram is simply graphical representation of the tonal range of your photo that helps you to evaluate the exposure. Before the digital photography, we had to wait until we develop the film to know for sure whether we got a good exposure when we capture it. Now by using the histogram, this information is at your fingertips before you take the photo, after you take the photo and during the post-processing. In this video, we're first going to look at what is histogram and learn how it works. Then we're going to look at some of the typical shapes of histogram. And finally, at the end, I will show you how to use the histogram in Luminar Neo during the photo editing process. First of all, let's find out what a histogram is. A histogram is a graph that represents the tones in an image. When we look at the actual histogram, we start by looking at the x-axis across the bottom. Moving left to right, this indicates the darkness and brightness of the tones. The blacks are represented on the far left, and the whites are represented on the far right. And of course, as you guessed it, the midtones are represented in the middle. Now, when we look at the Y axis or the left and right vertical, they refer to the amount of tone that is represented in a photo. To follow the theory, when there is a peak in the middle of the histogram, it indicates a lot of midtones in the image. When the histogram is leaning towards the left, it indicates lots of dark tones. And when it's leaning towards the right, it indicates lots of bright tones in your image. This is why histogram is so important as it allows you to determine the exposure of an image with a single glance. Specifically, it lets you see whether you've done any highlights or shadows clipping, meaning that you lost information in the highlights or shadows. To avoid this, you want to double check your camera as it is difficult, if not impossible, to fix it in the processing. Now, to make this little easier, we should have a look at a few histogram examples. Now, we're going to start our histogram examples by looking at the two extreme cases. First one is the shadows clipping. When this happens, it's represented as a peak pressing against the leftmost part of the histogram. Once again, you can see it on the histogram. You can see the peak here. You can see how it's leaning towards the left. And you can also see it on the image on the darker areas. The example number two, the highlights clipping, once again, same idea, we have the peak pressing against the right side, and you can see it on the image how specifically those areas are way too bright and overexposed. Now this, compared to the shadows clipping, is something that can be really tricky to fix, and sometimes impossible, even when you shoot in RAW. So once again, make sure that you keep an eye on your camera and have the histogram on to make sure that you don't end up with the image like this. And the example number three is a high key scene. When you have a scene that is high key, it has a lot of bright tones and not so many mid tones and blacks. When you are photographing a scene that you want to be a high key, your histogram should be stuck up on the right side, but not going up to the right edge. And you can clearly see it on our histogram here, where we have the peak in the highlights, however, still space all the way on the right. Now looking at example number four, representing the low-key scene. 
Loki scene is obviously one that is dark, as you can see on the image. In this case, our histogram will be stuck towards the left, and we sometimes have a little bit of data in our highlights, and sometimes a little bit in midtones. So continuing by looking at the different types of contrast. This is a good example of low contrast scene. Looking at our histogram, you can see that we have a high spike in the center for the midtones, and we have a very few dark and bright tones on each side. This shape of histogram is sometimes called bell shape, and it's quite typical for this washed out, low contrast look. And finally, the example number six, where we're gonna be looking at the high contrast scene. A high contrast scene is the one where there are lots of very dark and very bright tones. In this case, our histogram will show data on the left and right, as you can see here, and not so much in the middle, as we don't have many mid-tones. This shape again is this U shape, and it's very typical for high contrast look. So now we know what the histogram is, how it works, and what are some of the typical histogram shapes. And now I'm gonna show you how we can use all of this when we're gonna be editing in Luminar Neo. Okay, so we are once again in Luminar Neo and we are in an edit module. We are starting by looking at the sample file number one. And the first thing we need to look at is how to show histogram. For this, just right click anywhere on your image and select the show histogram. Once you do that, you will see that the histogram appears on the top of your main toolbar. After this, you can change the different modes of histogram. Right now, we are looking at the average, which I suggest you to start to use at the beginning to make things easier. But when you click on a histogram, you can then switch between all colors together and then individually red, green, and blue colors. Once you click on it again, the average will appear. The histogram in Luminar Neo has a built-in clipping mask. This will make our life much easier when we will be searching for the clipping in highlights and shadows. But how do we show the mask? Well, it's really simple. All you need to do is to hit J on your keyboard and that will show you the clipping mask for both highlights and shadows. When you hit it again, it disappears. The second way to show them is to navigate back to your histogram and you can notice the two dots in the top left and top right corner of your histogram. When I click on the dot on the top left of the histogram, it will show me the clipping for the shadows and you can see that it's represented by a blue color. So those are the areas that are clipped for your shadows and they are completely black. Equally, when I go back to my histogram and click on a dot in the top right corner, it will show me the clipping for the highlights and as you can see, they are represented with the red color. Those are the overexposed areas and they are completely white. So now we know that this image has some areas that are overexposed and some areas that are underexposed. So how do we change that? Well, there are many tools that will have an impact on a histogram and the image. However, the easiest way to control the histogram is with the use of develop tool. So let's go into our main toolbar navigate towards the essential section and open the develop tool. Once we do that, we are looking for the section of light, black and whites and curves. When we open the curves, you can see that we have the histogram once again here. And actually I suggest you to look at this one as there are a little bit more details here. So since we already here, let's have a look at the histogram again. What do we see? We see a nice U shape, which indicates a good level of contrast. However, when we're looking at the highlights, you can see that they are a little bit too high and too much towards the right. So how do we adjust the height of the histogram? Well, it's really simple. All we need to do is to go into the light section of our develop tool and here adjust the exposure slider. Since the area of the highlights is too bright, we wanna make it a little bit darker and we do that by shifting the exposure slider towards the left. We want to be gentle here, so I would just go somewhere around minus 0.15 or 17. Once we happy with it, we can continue. Now the next problem here is that the highlights are a little bit too close towards the right edge. So to adjust this, we need to go into our highlights and make them a little bit darker. We do that by shifting the highlight slider towards the left. So as you can see, when I'm doing it, it's removing the clipping away from your image, and it's also shifting the portion of the highlights more towards the center. So let's continue 
and adjust it the way we like it. So I think somewhere around here is looking quite good. I don't want to overdo it. We can always come back and adjust it. However, it gives us a good starting point. Now coming back to our image, we have taken care of our highlights and now we need to look at the shadow. Now generally for landscape image, it's not a problem that there are few areas that are underexposed. However, for this example, let's take care of them too. So coming back to our image, you can see that we have the blue overlays on the areas that are underexposed. So what we need to do is to come back to our light section and here in the shadows, just increase them and make them brighter. So as you can see where I shifted all the way, most of the blue disappear means that those areas are fixed now as well. When I'm done adjusting the clipping mask, I can hit J on my keyboard again to remove it so it doesn't distract us. And the final thing I want to show you for this example is the contrast. So when we go into our light section and move towards the smart contrast, you will see that when I shift it towards the right and increase the contrast, our U shape is getting a little bit wider and we are adding nice contrast to it. When we go the other way, so we remove the contrast, you can see that the gap between the highlights and shadow is getting more narrow. Now at this point, this really is more an artistic decision and it's completely up to you what you prefer. Saying that, I would still keep an eye on my histogram to make sure that I don't go too high or that I don't hit the clipping again for my highlights and shadows. And here we are back with the sample image number two where we're going to be editing this lovely photo of a young lady with a bright white background and a dark clothes. So already we can say that there is a lot of contrast here and we can confirm that by looking at the histogram. Again, the U shape representing really nice contrast on the image. Now looking at the histogram, we can also see that our darker parts and the shadows are a little bit too much towards the left. So how do we fix this? First of all, let's hit J on our keyboard so we can see the clipping mask and immediately we can see the areas which are underexposed and 100% black. So we already know how to take care of that and we will head straight into our light section and our shadow slider. Those areas are way too dark, so we know we need to open the shadows and add some brightness into them. So we do that by shifting the shadow slider towards the right and see how much of the clipping we can remove. So I think somewhere around 70 is a good starting point. Now looking at our histogram, we again want to make the height a little more balanced. To do that, since the height is now more on the dark side, we jump back to our exposure and this time instead of going down, we're going to go up. So again, do it very gently and see what it's going to do. I think somewhere around 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 gives us really nice balance between the shadows and highlights. Now we've taken care of the clipping in the shadows. And we also taking care of the height of the histogram. The one thing we haven't done yet, we haven't looked at the highlight. Now looking at the histogram, you can see that there is little gap here. So I don't think that we need to make the highlights any darker. However, we could try to make them brighter. To do that, we're going to go back to our highlight slider. And this time, instead of going towards left, we're going to go towards right. Now shift it a little bit and see what it's going to do. And you can see that the histogram is moving towards right and making everything a little bit more balanced. We don't want to overdo it. However, I think somewhere around 10 is looking very good. After this, once again, we can jump into our smart contrast. But before we're going to do that, let's double check our blacks and whites. Now looking at the histogram, I don't think that we need to do anything with blacks. However, with the whites, we can still adjust it a little bit to get reduce of this little gap where there are no details here. So let's go into our whites and adjust the slider. When we go towards the right, we make the whites brighter. When we go towards the left, we make them darker. So in this case, we want to make them brighter. So let's increase the whites and see what the histogram does. And again, at this point, we need to keep an eye on our clipping to see that we don't add too much of the brightness and whites in any areas. Looking at the histogram and looking at the image, it's still looking healthy. And I think we can leave it there. There is an additional way of how you can adjust your whites and that's by going into the curves and then going to the bottom of your curves. Here you can see the three dots. The one all the way on the left adjusts the shadows, the one in the middle, the midtones, and the one all the way on the right, the whites. So to remove the gap here, we can just take this little point here 
and shift it more towards the space where the histogram is. So again, keep an eye on the image and see what's looking good, but I think somewhere around here we are quite good. And since we're done here, the one thing that is left is a contrast. So for this, we're gonna go back to our light section and adjust the contrast here. Remember, when we go towards the right, we make the gap a little wider and add more contrast to the image. And when we go towards the left, we will remove the contrast and in this case, remove the rest of the clipping. So I think once we're happy with it, we can just keep an eye at what point we get the clipping back. So I think minus 14 is looking good and the edit is finished. Now we can always double check the before and after by clicking on the preview icon on the bottom of your screen. So let's have a look before and after, and that's that. Now, of course, that you could continue, you could use all the different portrait tools or the creative tools and do much more to the image. However, for the purpose of the histogram editing, we are done with this image. Of course, that there are many other ways to use the histogram and you will discover them as you get more and more comfortable with this tool. Use this video as a building stone and try to use the knowledge next time you are out shooting or editing in Luminar Neo. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name was Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.